Hello everybody, thank you for tuning into the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Frank Wilcox. Frank Wilcox was born on October the 13th, 1907 in DeSoto, Missouri. After he graduated high school, he traveled around working a series of odd jobs. In 1924, he decided he wanted to get into show business. He opened a production company called Frank Wilcox Company and started producing plays. That wasn't very lucrative. And by 1930, he was in Pomona, California, working in the Lemon Groves and becoming a founding member of the Pomona Playhouse. In 1935, he was in Pasadena. He was a member of the Pasadena Playhouse he was on stage one day when a talent scout from Warner Brothers saw him and immediately signed him to a contract. He had an average look and he was perfect to play any kind of role. He worked steadily up until World War II when he quit show business and enlisted in the Navy. He served on a destroyer, saw a lot of action, was awarded five battle stars, and after the war, it was right back to Hollywood where Warner Brothers re-signed him and he kept on with the character work. Between the years of 1946 and 1950, he was in 56 different movies, three of which were awarded Oscars for Best Picture. In 1953, he married Joy Langston. They had three children and they were together for the rest of his life. Throughout the 1950s, he continued to work in film and he was making an occasional appearance on television. But in 1957, that's when he decided that to put films behind him and TV was the way to go. He was also an all-around nice guy. He was a member of the Screen Actors Guild and actually sat on the board of directors. He was an honorary mayor of Granada Hills, California. He was an honorary fire marshal for the city of Los Angeles. On January the 11th of 1964, the Los Angeles mayor declared that to be Frank Wilcox Day. And his hometown of DeSoto, Missouri used to hold a Frank Wilcox Festival. It was held every year in March around his birthday. They had to stop it because of the pandemic. Hopefully, they'll start doing that again in the future. In 1973, he played his final role. That was a judge on the television show Kung Fu. He died on March the 3rd, 1974, at the age of 67 of a heart attack in his Granada Hills, California home. He's buried in the San Fernando Cemetery in Los Angeles, California. During his 39-year career in the entertainment industry, Frank Wilcox appeared in 211 movies. He also made 269 appearances on 37 different television shows. And what I have for you today is Frank Wilcox playing Mr. Brewster on a classic episode of the Beverly Hillbillies. So I just want to thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you have a great today and an even better tomorrow. Cabin in the pines, the weather is so cold, hot coffee freezes in the cups, and when the chickens lay their eggs, they lay them standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody better get ready to pry that sun up in the morning get it started. Yeah, I sure we'll be glad to get back to that nice warm mansion in Beverly Hills. It ain't no fun sleeping on this cold, hard floor. Mm, that's a fact. You think that's bad? You ought to try sharing a room with that wild daughter of yours. Well, at least ways you got a bed. That ain't a bed. That's a nest, a roost, and a den and a hutch all in one. <laughs> Is them animal friends of Ellie's still coming in at night, Granny? Everything that can get through the window. Why don't you shut the window? Because I can't sleep without fresh air. Especially with that third party in bed with us. What third party? Ellie, can you come out here and bring your friend with you? Yeah, Granny. Uh, don't you worry about it, Granny. I'll chuck it out. Whatever it is, got to get your sleep. Did you know us, Granny? Your pa wants that polecat. Give it to him. 
Now, wait a minute. Don't point that thing at me. <laughs> Who would have drove outdoors on a night like this? Well, don't you want him, Pop? I just want to say that Granny'd appreciate it if he'd have this little fella sleep with his own family. All right, I'll go get the others in. Oh, no, no, no. Outdoors with his family. Otherwise, when we go to California, they might not take him back in. And if a skunk ain't welcome with his own family, he just about ain't got nobody to turn to. All right, I'll put him out the window. Uncle Jed, why can't we go back to Beverly Hills right away? Reckon we can tell him the truth, Granny? I reckon he's big enough. Well, you see, we promised your ma we'd stay here and help her till she gets herself married to Mr. Brewster. Well, how long will that take? Well, it don't take long. She's got him boarding in your room now where she can get at him. Pearl told me tonight's the night. She's gonna feed him into a stupor, then set him in the parlor and sing to him until he proposes. That's a powerful combination. Pearl's cooking and singing. Yeah. If he can get got, Pearl will get him. <laughs> Ain't that a precious picture? <sighs> Niagara Falls. Where the honeymooners go. <laughs> Understand they're having special winter rates there now. I think I'd better turn in. I've got to get up awfully early. No, 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 no. You, you sit down and relax. Jethreen and me's got a special surprise for you. It isn't food, is it? Food for the soul and the spirit. Music. What would you like to hear? Oh, anything you'd like to sing. Well, I'll just pick out something at random. <laughs> Let's try this, Jeffrey. Oh, promise me that someday you and I will take our love together to some sky where we can be alone. Jed, what's got them wolves so stirred up tonight? Oh, but something sure is setting them off. <laughs> hey, Link, it's sleep a week. Go to the right, Granny. Go to the left, Granny. Don't oh. move keeping you awake, too, Granny? He sure is. Howling goes right through you. It ain't their hollering that's getting me. It's their snoring. <laughs> Look for yourself. Ellie's got two of them under the bed. Granny, we gotta get that girl back to Beverly Hills. She's going right back to being a wild cougar. What y'all all doing out here? Try to keep warm. Sure it's cold in there without you, Granny. Mind if I join you? I reckon so, if you don't mind a little human company for a change. Uncle <laughs> Jed, we just gotta get ourselves back to Beverly Hills. We will, Jethro, as soon as your ma gets proper hitched to Mr. Brewster. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, Pearl, give it all you got tonight. Oh, we's all gonna be down with pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> Just a song at twilight when the lights are low and the flickering shadows softly come and go. That was a wonderful concert. You both are uh, unusually talented. Thank you. Yes, indeed. That, that means a lot coming from you. Naturally, folks around here brag on us. In fact, they think we ought to go on a concert tour. Oh, really? Oh, yes. My neighbors is always after me to sing out of town. <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> uh, m Mr. Brewster, do you really like music and singing? Well, I used to. I mean, I used to sing a lot myself in college musicals, amateur theatricals. Was you on the stage, Mr. Brewster? 
Oh, yes, yes. After college, I did quite a bit of little theater work, summer stock. Matter of fact, there was a time when I seriously considered the stage as my career. Mo, Mr. Brewster's an actor. Well, not any longer. My father had other ideas. He insisted I get into the oil business. Uh, Mr. Brewster, did you ever do anything from the Bard or Avon? That Shakespeare. Oh, I just love him. Well, as a matter of fact, I once played the lead in Romeo and Juliet. Which one was you? I was Romeo. Uh, in my youth, I was considered quite a, quite a leading man type. And there were those who thought I had rather a handsome profile. Well, you still got it. And I'll bet you can act to beat the band. Oh, come on. Take off a part for her. Something from Shakespeare. Sit down, Catherine. Well, I doubt if I can remember anything. Oh, please, Mr. Brewster. Well, uh, perhaps I can recall something from the balcony scene. Let's see now. Uh, how does it go? Uh, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, are far more fair than she. Go to bed, Jethreen. Uh, well, I think I'll turn in. Oh, well, uh, uh, please, do some more of them love speeches from Shakespeare. Well, my throat is a little sore. I think I'd better gargle a little warm salt water and go to bed. Well, I can take care of you. That's another one of my specialties. Nursing the sick. Well, it might be the flu bug, and you wouldn't want to catch it. Uh, good night. If his flu bug is as hard to catch as he is, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Jed, have you ever noted to be so cold? Never have, Jethro. Ah, this ain't cold. Your blood is thinned out from living in California. You say this ain't cold, Granny? Look who else has huddled up to the fire. Ellie and her wolves. Still cold this morning, Granny. Cold? You call this cold? Why, well, I remember a winter morning that was so cold. That when I went to milk the cow, the milk froze before it hit the pail. And break it off in sticks. Yes, sir. I carried a double armful of milk in and never spilt a stick. Gee, Granny, how'd you drink it? Bite on it? Nope. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> You're in a right good mood this morning. Jeff, I got a feeling in my bones that Pearl got him last night. Oh! I seen Mr. Brewster's car coming down the road, and eight pearls with him. I told him, my bones is never wrong. When's the wedding going to be married in charge? Yeah, let's see your ring, Pearl. You want me to carry Mr. Brewster over the threshold for you, Ma? She don't look too happy. She don't sound too happy, neither. Oh, all well, women folk cry when they're about to get married. I didn't get him. Oh. Did you try your best, Pearl? Oh, Granny, I throwed the book at him. Cooking, sewing, singing. I even nursed him through the flu. Got him well in five minutes, <laughs> but he didn't propose. Jed, you go out there and do your duty to your female cousin. Ask that city fella what he'd rather get, married or buried. Now, Granny, I don't hold with getting folks married unless it's willing. Pearl's got enough willing for both of them. <laughs> Are you going to make a liar out of my bones? Yeah, I'll have a talk with Mr. Brewster. Where'd he go, Pearl? He said he was going to park the car on the warm side of the cabin. But he must have run off. After him, everybody, we'll head him off at the pass and shoot him down like a dog. Oh, you hold on. You ain't shooting nobody down. Just simmer down. Why, he didn't run off at all. Except we'll need you, Ellie, to get him back in here. How come? Uh, looks like a couple of your friends are sizing him up for breakfast. <laughs> In all sincerity, Mr. Pampett, your, 
Your cousin Pearl is a very remarkable woman. It's just that, well, I don't want to get married. Oh, I understand that, Mr. Brewster, and I thank you for speaking the truth like a man. But my cousin Pearl has got herself a problem. Oh, what's that? Well, uh, ain't no secrets in the hills. and Everybody's dog knows that you've been boarding with her over to her place, and they all know she's had her cap set for you. And, oh, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Brewster. Jed? Did he say yes? Can we come out now? Well, not yet a while, Granny. Well, if you're too chicken to shoot him, Ellie's got her wolves standing by. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brewster? In order to save my cousin Pearl from shame, I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Anything I can do. I want you to propose to her in front of somebody. But... And let her turn you down, of course. Oh. Oh, I see. Of course, it's that'll save face. Uh, uh, well, uh, Pearl will know that she's supposed to turn me down. Oh, sure. We'll have an understanding with Pearl. Now, the one I think you ought to propose in front of is Elverna Bradshaw. You know, Mr. Clampett, this idea of yours is quite inspired. Oh, just a notion. You see, Elverna is the biggest gossip in the hill. No, really, it's brilliant. <laughs> it combines drama, pathos, suspense. It has a happy ending. Great third act curtain. It's, it's, it's real theater. Of course, you'll have to be convincing so Elverna will... Convincing? Be. Why, I'll give a performance that the people of these hills will remember as long as they live. <laughs> well, just so that... Uh, when Pearl Bodine turns down my impassioned proposal of marriage, there won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> now, Verna, don't cry easy. Oh, well, now, surely you're not going to waste this dramatic scene before just one person. Well, I reckon I'll Verna's daughter. I've got it. I've got it. The movie house where Pearl plays the piano. You want to propose there? Well, it's perfect. Everybody in town will see it. Well, what a kind of shame you to be turned down in front of all them people. Well, it's, it's just a performance. <clears throat> I've learned one thing in the theater. An actor always gives a better performance in front of a full house. Well, doggies. That sure is nice, are you? Oh, it's my it's my pleasure, Mr. Bannon. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, Granny, uh, come on in. Come here, on, everybody. Come here, 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 everybody. I reckon we better let Mr. Brewster tell you what's going to happen. Oh. Well, tonight at the movie house, Mrs. Bodine, while the whole town looks on, I'm going to ask you to marry me. Oh. <laughs> until you hear the rest of the story. Now, Pearl, when Mr. Brewster asks you to marry him, you're going to say no. Not unless I'm as drunk as you are. <laughs> Howdy, Pearl. Evening. Evening, Pearl. Jethro, I want to head down to the theater to get a fire going in the stove. Where's Jethro, night, Pearl? Why, she's in her room getting dressed. Go on and see her. Granny, what happened to your mink coat? This is it. Tonight's kind of special, so I'm wearing the pretty side out. <laughs> you sure got your pretty side out tonight, Pearl? Oh, I tell you, Jed, I'm as nervous as if I was going to get a real honest-to-goodness proposal. And it would be real if your cousin Jed would do his duty and hold a shotgun on that fella, Brewster. Now, ladies, let's settle for what we got. This way, Pearl can come to California without nobody saying she left town in disgrace. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Ain't you dressed up? That boiled shirt makes your face look kind of dark. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing a little theatrical makeup. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, uh, how would you like some pancake on your face? How'd you like some sweet potato pie on yours? <laughs> Fetch me some hot possum grease, Pearl, and I'll fling it on. <laughs> now, ladies, you misunderstood me. Pancake is a type of makeup we use in the theater. An actor like myself would feel positively undressed without it. I thought you was oil man. Well, that's my business. But at heart, I shall always be an actor. <laughs> say now, speaking of acting, you two got it figured out what you want to say? Oh, yeah, we rehearsed 12 times. Um, Mr. Brewster will be sitting on the front row. And when the picture's over, he'll jump up uh, and he's... Excuse me. I've been thinking about that. 
I believe it would be more effective if I made an entrance. Entrance? Yes, I'll come down the aisle. Oh, oh, all right. And then Mr. Brewster's going to say, Mrs. Bodine, don't go to California with your cousin Jed. Stay here and be my wife. Uh, excuse, uh, I, I've been thinking about that, too. Uh, after a big entrance down the aisle, that's going to seem like a pretty flat opening speech. <laughs> well, you just say what you want to say. All I got to say is, no, I won't marry you. If that's Homer Winch, I'm going to hit him right in the hip. Good evening, Pearl. Oh, Brenda Bradshaw, what, what are you doing here? Well, you and me being such close friends, I just thought I'd offer to play Piani for you at the theater tonight. What? Surely you're not going to show up and have folks whispering behind your back all during the picture. <laughs> What in the world would they be whispering about? Pearl, I'm your best friend. You don't have to pretend with me. <laughs> the whole town knows how you've been flinging yourself at that border of yours. For your information, Alberta Bradshaw, Mr. Booster proposed to me 12 times today, and 12 times I turned him down. <laughs> Is that why he gave you this here mink coat? Cause you turned him down. <laughs> this here mink coat was given to me by my niece, Ellen Mae Clampett. Oh, Pearl, I keep telling you, you don't have to pretend with me. I'm your best friend. <laughs> Alverna Bradshaw is your best friend. You're up to your eyeballs and enemies. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, if you was to go in there now and propose in front of Alverna, you could save yourself a trip to the theater. And the news would get around a heap quicker. You don't understand, Mr. Clampett. An actor needs an audience. Alverna, if you don't mind, I'd like you to get out of my coat and out of my house. I'm going to be late for the theater. Pearl, take your best friend's advice and sneak out of town quietly. You can depend on me to smooth everything over. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> performance is right, I reckon she'll sneak out of town in a hurry if she ain't already snuck. <laughs> Mind you, Pearl's my best friend, and I ain't one to talk, but... Uh... <laughs> Good evening, lady. You too, Alverna. <laughs> oh, I noticed Mr. Brewster wasn't with her. Oh, and did you see that mink coat? Well, I wouldn't trade this little band of gold and a home-loving husband for a dozen mink coats. Would I, Luke? Luke? <laughs> Luke Bradshaw! <laughs> that new sneak, he got away again. <laughs> <laughs> poster out front. Farewell performance. Does that mean you are leaving? 
Oh, yes, Mr. Brewster. I'm going to California with my cousin Jed and his family. Oh, no, 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 please. Please, I beg you. I implore you. I beseech you. Don't go. <laughs> Stay here and be my wife. <laughs> No, thank you, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> I cannot. I will not accept that answer. Oh, I love you, Pearl Bodine. I love you with all my heart. With all my soul, I love you as no man has ever loved woman before. He's better than Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> be mine. Pearl, be mine. Come back here, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> no, Mr. Brewster, my answer is no. Then life has come to an end. But what is life without love? If I was him, I'd let it go at that. <laughs> without Pearl Bodine, there is no love. Oh, me darling, oh, me precious. Say those words that will make me the happiest of men. I'm behind you. <laughs> My answer is still no. Better quit while you're ahead, Mr. Brewster. Oh, how those words stab into me heart like cold steel. And only you, Pearl Bodine, can heal the mortal wound. Oh, moon of me desire, marry me, Pearl. No. I promise you a life of happiness. No. A life of luxury. No. Oh, me darling, look into me tear-stained eyes. Look into the tortured face of your love slave. Free me with that one divine word. Say yes. Say yes, and together we will enter a paradise of love everlasting. Yes, 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 I'll marry you. Thank you very much. Uh, did you say yes? Yes. If I hadn't said yes, I was ready myself.